Hey, it's Ranger Russ back at Tamanasset Beach Day Park. You can see I am out on the beach. I thought we might go into the woods, but there's something really special that we're going to do this afternoon. So we're going to start out here on the beach and we'll work our way to our, our little activity today. So Tamanasset, a reminder, is open. You do need to maintain social distance. Again, if you are walking with people within your household, you don't need social different distance. That's people that live in the house with you. But anyone else, you need to maintain seven skunks between you and the other person at all times. Very, very important. We need to keep social distance. Also, it's a really good idea to wear masks. I don't wear them during this show because it, you'd never be able to understand me. Um, but a very good idea to wear masks, to cough into your elbow, don't touch your face, wash your hands. All of these things are important during this time. So, why am I standing out here on the beach? We're going to be talking about salt. The ocean is full of salt. Many of you that have been swimming don't really like the taste of it, right? When it gets in your mouth or your eyes, it doesn't taste good. It kind of stings your eyes. So the first question is, why is there salt in the ocean? It's a very complicated answer, but I'm just going to give you the simplified version. As it rains, there are mild acids in the rain, and those acids release ions from the upland areas, and those ions flow down, and those ions, for the main part, are what make up the salt in the ocean. It becomes condensed. There's a little bit of it in the fresh water, but it becomes condensed in the ocean. The ocean doesn't have anywhere to go. The water evaporates back up into the sky, but those ions remain in the ocean. So that's how we get salt. All right, so what we're gonna do out here is we're gonna measure how much salt is in the ocean. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can measure the salt in the ocean. You can do specific gravity, which actually is the weight of the dissolved salt that's in the ocean. Uh, you can do PPT, which is parts per thousand. That's the one I use because it's a very simple number. Uh, you can also use conductivity, which is how much uh, electricity is conducted through, and salt conducts more electricity, so you can measure it that way. We're gonna use a very simple meter. Now, I've already taken a bucket of water, because obviously it'd be very difficult to get water with all these waves. So I scooped up a bucket so that the sand settles out of it. And I have this very simple salinity meter that we're going to use. We use this in our, in our aquariums back at the Nature Center. And if I hold that up, actually it's reversed for you. So I'm going to turn this around. And we are reading, it looks like about 22. Okay, that's not a lot of salt. Later in the summer, that salinity is going to get up. Uh, I think the highest I've seen it out here is 32. Uh, here we're at 22. Okay. Now, this also gives specific gravity. It's not completely accurate with specific gravity, but it's 1.016 is the specific gravity. The tide is coming in, and I'm starting to get wet, so we're going to move in a little bit. Okay. So we are now going to go over to the salt marsh and we're going to measure the salinity in a salt marsh. There are two things that can happen in a salt marsh. Either it has a lot more salinity or it has a lot less salinity. And that depends on how much rain we've had. Obviously with lots of freshwater rain, the salt marsh is going to have less salt than the sound. We need to stop and pick this up. So people leave their trash on the beach. Not very good for wildlife. Something that I challenge people to do, I do this on my Instagram post. So if you ever wanna visit my Instagram, it's ranger.russ, I'm on Instagram, and I'm challenging people to pick up one piece of trash every day. Go out, find a piece of trash, pick it up. If everybody in Connecticut picks up one piece of trash every day, it's gonna get hard to find trash. That'd be great if everybody would do that. Uh, so everybody's not doing that, so maybe you should pick up a couple of pieces of trash, make up for the people that aren't picking up their trash. Okay, so we're gonna go to our salt marsh. Now, I was saying, the salt marsh could have a less salinity. That's if we have a lot of rain. Also, 
In the summer, there are called salt pans out in the marsh. Those salt pans can get a very high salinity as the fresh water evaporates out and those salt ions remain. Then you're going to get a very high salinity. So it has rained today. We should also talk a little bit about temperature because temperature can change how much salt is in it a little bit as well. I did t uh, check the temperature of Long Island Sound and it's about 40, 44 degrees right now. And I checked the temperature of the marsh water. The marsh has about 45 degrees. So we're, we're pretty close to the same there. All right. So we were at 22 parts per thousand over in the, out on the beach. Now we're gonna, we're in the salt marsh. We are going to take a scoop of water from the marsh and I'll hold it up there and it is just about zero. All right. So right now there's no salt in here. And I explained one of the main reasons for that is we had a lot of rain the past few days. So that rain comes down and eventually it flows out into Long Island Sound. Another thing is as the tides come in, sometimes with a full moon or a new moon, we have really high tides and the salt comes all the way in. But if we don't have the full moon and the new moon, if we're right in between those, then the so, uh, tides are not going to come all the way in. We're not going to get as much salt way up here. So right now there's almost no salt in the salt marsh. At other times there will be lots of salt in the salt marsh. Now, one of the reasons I wanted to do this program this afternoon is because yesterday we put out our Killy Trap. We talked about Killy this morning, and if you go to megspointnaturecenter.org, you can see all of the programs that we've done. Uh, go to the Virtual Learning Center. You can also go to YouTube and see the videos there as well. But we talked about these really cool fish, Killy fish, and... I brought in, we have the trap. So the reason we need to catch so many of these fish is there are lots of fish that like to eat them. We did talk about that this morning, how there are plenty of things out there that like to eat killifish. And we feed them to our turtles, we feed them to our snakes, um, we feed them to bigger fish. Sometimes we'll feed them to crabs and lobsters. We'll let you take a look here. So you can look, there's a few. Sometimes we get a lot of these. The, the trap will be absolutely full and we'll actually have to let some go. And other times, yeah, we'll just get that many. Sometimes we don't get any. So, and all we use is a little bit of dog food. That's what we use for bait. So I'm gonna reclip this and we're gonna put it back out and see if we can get some more tomorrow. All right. Now, one of the things that we do, we do not feed our reptiles the killifish that are from salt water. So right now there's not very much salt, almost no salt in the salt marsh. We will still put these in a freshwater tank for a few days to make sure that they don't have salt in them. And that way our snakes and turtles will like it. They don't really like all that salt in their diet. All right, let's see if we have any questions. Somebody says we should wear gloves when picking up trash. Yes, we should. I wasn't really thinking I'd be picking up trash. Um, but yes, wearing gloves, taking precautions is a very good idea, especially at this time. Uh, I really like it that everybody is putting up where they're from. That's great. I see somebody is uh, messaging us from Massachusetts. This afternoon we had some people, or this morning we had some people from New Jersey, and I've heard that there is a group from Ireland that is watching these episodes, which is pretty cool. Uh, so big shout out if you're watching from Ireland right now. All right, do we have any more questions about the salinity in the salt marsh? I'm not seeing any questions right now. Again, let's do our reminders. Make sure that you do not touch your face, you wash your hands, you cover your mouth when you cough, 
you uh, wear a mask when you're out in public, you keep your six foot distance. It's about seven skunks. Um, all of those things will allow us to keep these parks open. We really want people to enjoy the fresh air and enjoy the park. Um, so we're trying to, trying to keep people at a distance. Someone is asking, is it cold and windy there today? It is windy. Uh, down away from out of the wind behind the dune, it wasn't as bad. Uh, temperature today is about, uh, I don't know, feels like it's in like the mid 40s, I would say. Um, but there is a bit of a wind, so that brings the temperature down. Any other questions? All right. Like us on Facebook, follow us, like our uh, YouTube page. We're going to be putting additional videos up on YouTube, a bit longer, more detail. Uh, so look for those coming up on YouTube. And we're going to be doing more crafts and activities. I have a great crew of volunteers here at the Nature Center. We have people that are still coming in to feed the animals. And then I have the greeters that are looking for things to do. So we've asked them to contribute more ideas crafts or word searches or different things, vocabulary words, they're going to be giving us more information so we can get more stuff on our website. So a big shout out to all of the volunteers at the Meg's Point Nature Center. Somebody asked me the other day why I say we when I'm talking about this program because I'm doing it by myself. Uh, I do refer to we when I'm using programs because the animals are part of the program. But I also refer to the volunteers at the Nature Center. We're a community. They may not be in the building at the time, but they're there in spirit. And they're, they're still working, even though they're not in the building. So that's the we of the Meg's Point Nature Center. All right. I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Tomorrow at 11 o'clock and then tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock, we, we do these programs from Tuesday to Friday at 11 and 2 every day. So thank you for watching Meg's Point Nature Center.